Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, as you know, pocket holes are a big part of cabinet building and a lot of things anymore these days. And um, th this machine has been something that I've found to be an incredible investment, especially if you're already into a line of tools that are, you know, on the price point that we talk about a lot on this channel. This tool runs anywhere between three and four hundred dollars, depending on where you're buying it from, and that's the Craig Foreman. Uh, I use it a lot in conjunction with my Domino from Festool for building cabinet face frames and stuff like that. If I have a position where I don't need a Domino because it's going to be an invisible joint, I usually go with this because this machine is very fast. Anything that's going to be a visible joint or I'm worried about the annoyance of having to fill the holes that this leaves, then I'll use a Domino and just hide it all to start with. But this machine compared to using a standard craig jig you know i believe this is oh what is this one craig pocket hole kp8 310 and 320 this is their new little set they came out with i picked this up to go in my truck it's their nice new one that comes apart and you have two different singles as well as you can have a double together if you want and everything has a little spots for screws and all in here. Nice little set just to keep in a sustainer in the truck. If you have to repair someone's cabinet or drawer front that's coming off or whatever, you can just grab this one little box and keep it stocked with what you need for three quarter material. You're off to the races. But, and this has kind of been an experiment this week because almost everything I've ever used on this Foreman has been three quarter material. And I picked up this half inch Baltic birch and I built some cabinets out of it here in the shop this week. And uh, I wondered so how it would do on half-inch stuff. And I actually went on YouTube and did a bunch of looking, believe it or not, here, of people doing it with half-inch plywood. And surprisingly, there's a lot less videos on that than you think. But anyway, I'm going to show it with that today. And for that, I'm using the Craig 1-inch coarse threads with this Foreman. But this Foreman machine... It has a fence here at the back that you actually set for the thickness of material you're going to be putting pocket holes in. It goes from half inch, three quarter, and inch and a half that are the actual marked locations. You can set it anywhere you like in between there, but that's what it's marked. Up to one and a half and as small as a half. It has an clamp, automatic clamping system here. So as compared to setting up a, like these little jigs there where you need to clamp everything, make sure it's all good to go and then drill your pocket hole and deal with all that stuff this actually even has dust collection in the back and normally this is over against the wall here in the shop but i wanted to show it out here in the middle the machine the biggest problem with this is how difficult it is to open right here to me but you don't have to get in here very often but there's a motor right here and it rides on two rails back and forth to actually drive the holes so it's almost like having a, a drill motor right in, right in your table. But some of the other amazing things are this fence is marked from zero at the center out to right around seven inches in each direction. It does have stops you can flip out on this fence as well if you wanna make repeatable uh, joints with this. And normally though, me, I'll set my first pocket hole about an inch and a half from the edge and thereafter I'll go, you know, inch and a half to, to four and a half to seven and a half. You know, I, I'll do it at whatever that project is demanding, you know, cabinet box that I need to use it to attach the brace frame or something like that. That's how I'll do it. And that way I end up, even though people may not ever see them, I have nice consistent pocket holes all the way down so I have an even pressure on that glue joint when I put it together. And yes, I do glue my pocket hole joints. Just something I do. This has a, a lock where you can lock this handle down if you're, if you're gonna be transporting it or you don't wanna have to have this thing so tall, it will lock with it all the way flat down. But right now we're set for such a small joint, it's not gonna go very far. But if you wanted to go from half inch to three quarter, all, it is, all that's involved is moving the fence. That's it. I do usually grab a scrap piece of material, throw it on here and drive one just to verify that the head of the screw is gonna be below the surface and things like that, because you can alter this fence by, you know, a sixteenth of an inch or something, and it will actually 
get your screw head where you want it. If you want it below the surface, which is, you know, I do, I like the screw head to get below the surface so I don't have that bump in there. A lot harder to do with half inch plywood, but this is a piece of oh, half inch Baltic birch right here. Really nice little material I do some cabinets out of. But uh, let's drill a hole in this. You can see how quick this is as compared to a standard Craig jig. You have your piece. All you do is set this fence on a half inch, okay? We want to put it dead center. So if we want to do that, since it's marked from zero out, since my piece here appears to be five and a half inches wide, I can set it right at two and three quarter uh, in each direction, right here and right here, and I know my pocket hole is going to be dead center. Has a little red button right here that keeps you from being able to start the motor, so you have to push this red button in with your thumb and then pull the trigger. And that's all you have to do. Hold your board down until the clamp engages. Start the motor and make sure it's running before you start the pocket hole, but this is how quick it is. Done. And there's our pocket hole. Pretty, pretty decent for half inch material there, I think. And uh, if you want to do more of them, say my normal style, I have one there in the middle. I want to set them at one inch in on each side. Set, set it to an inch there, flip it to here, set it an inch on each side, and I have three evenly spaced pocket holes. You know, for the side of a drawer, you're doing whole cabinet cases, whatever you're building, this makes it ridiculously fast. If you're not really at the point of wanting to buy things like a domino or whatever, this is an amazing machine for cabinet making and so many other projects. I don't have to tell you much about Craig Jigs. They're everywhere on YouTube. Everyone uses them. But this machine right here, lightweight. It's most mostly like a heavy plastic, very heavy plastic base on this. But uh, let's go ahead and show you the underneath side. You can use this with or without dust collection. But as you can see, it has a hose right here at the at that side for dust collection. And there's the motor that rides and pulls the pulls it up through. Anyway. One of my favorite little machines for doing production cabinet work and one that has been an amazing investment for the shop. I've had this machine probably, oh, I don't know, several years, four or five years at least. And there's no telling how many cabinets this has made. And I keep actually kept it in my trailer, my shop trailer for a long time because I just kept it set up for three quarter material where it you know make a one by four piece fit perfectly for doing things like re putting a new piece into a door jam if you're rebuilding a rental door jam or something you can just oscillate your little spot out that you need to replace take your copy piece in here after you've got it cut punch your pocket holes in the end go in run it in done just just slick for a lot of repairs like that but anyway, thank you guys for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know down below what kind of uh, Craig Jigs you use or if you use some other brand. There are several other brands of these. And uh, just let me know. I'm curious. If you use a Domino instead, let me know that too. I'm curious what you guys that are here all build. But this is a lot of machine for 400 bucks. I can say that. I love it. Uh, there is a video with Jay Bates where he discusses how he's broken a lot of bits in his, but his was a pre-production run, apparently. But I've never broken a bit on this thing. This is uh, the second or third bit in here, but I replaced them just because getting harder to drill, I had actually worn them out. So I don't know if they changed the guide uh, slot here or what, but they're not breaking like that for me anymore. If they are for you, let me know. I'm, I'm curious on that as well, because that's one of the main videos on the foreman that there are on YouTube and kind of gave me the impression that this breaks a lot. Fortunately, I had bought it before I read that, so it didn't influence my decision, but it does have four spots here, one in each corner for putting screws to hold it down to a desk or bench, whatever. So turns it into a nice little rig. Had a table left over here in the shop, threw it on that, perfect. See you guys. Thanks a lot. Bye.